Greetings, you Stormer, and welcome to another Lake Air update. My god, it's been over a month, I think, since the last one, or around a month. We're going to be looking at what has developed here, and it is crazy. The lake has filled a huge amount. I'm going to show you how the Warburton River rose up and then overtopped its banks. We're going to look at how the extensive flooding changed the weather in Central Australia. We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. Let's get started. I'm going to get to some higher resolution detailed satellite imagery in a bit, but let's go to the slightly coarser resolution for the broader overview. This is the Aquamodus, and I'm going back to April 22nd, and then that was when the last video was published. You can see the water extent down the Warburton here, reaching this area. And then this is Cooper's Creek down to here. So let's go forward in time and you'll see that water surge down. It gets covered by clouds occasionally, but you'll see it surge down the Warburton into Lake Air. And also you see there's Lake Blanche filled with water and water just more slowly gets through the complicated lake system uh, that makes up some aspect of Cooper's Creek. Now, as we go forward, you'll see this pincer of blue shooting into Lake Eyre, and that's the flood coming down from the Warburton. So as it comes down, you see it just punch through. It goes down to the end really quickly, and then it spreads out in all directions, filling most of the lake, although the basin in the southeast remains dry to this day, I think, although it's getting close now. But there's something, I'm going to zoom in because there's something quite interesting that happens here as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. So the recent imagery, it really is getting into that final basin. Let's zoom in. There we go. We got a closer look at Lake Eyre. And this is the 25th of April. Let's go forward. Keep an eye out up here. That's the Warburton. Over to the right is Cooper's Creek. But let's focus on the Warburton. And the water comes rushing in down. You can see the darkness of the channel that it's going to fill up and it just shoots down north to south very rapidly really really extremely rapidly and then it over it spreads out on the sides now the thing that i want to point out here is that there's a particular day where we see the water kind of swash around a bit and it is around then so between the 18th of may and the 19th of may you can see it just shoot out towards the west so I'll put my marker as to where it was on the 18th, and then there you go to the 19th. And I'm going to go into what caused that, but let's get into some more high-res stuff now. We can see the water coming in from the north, also on the Himawari 9 satellite here. And this is from the 28th of April through to the 4th of May. And you just see it beginning that surge down from the north, from the Warburton. For the next highest resolution satellite imagery, we've got the Sentinel-3 European satellite. This one is kind of like our next notch up, but we're going to go up to high resolution in a moment. This one gives a broad overview, and in this animation, we're seeing from the beginning of April all the way through to the 20th of May. You see the surge coming down the Warburton, and then also the Cooper's Creek coming in, filling up all those lakes, and also check down in the bottom right, you'll see the filling of Lake Blanche, and of course, at the end, the surge of water into Lake Eyre itself. For even high resolution imagery, we turn to Sentinel 2. Sentinel 2 gives a detailed view of Lake Eyre on the 23rd of May, when the water was already beginning to move into the final large basin down to the southeast. I wonder whether it can get into Lake Eyre South as well. There is a small channel you can just make out, but it's gonna to have to fill this one up first. So this is really a stunning image, and we can also view it in three dimensions. This is a view of what it looks like from 65.55 kilometers altitude. One of the fun things we can do in the 3D is we can lower the altitude to say the highest point on Earth, Mount Everest. So I'm actually just going to do that for a bit of fun. We go down. Let's go down. Let's see. I got to work out the elevation. That's 25 kilometers. I've got to get down to about nine kilometers. 
Mount Everest is just under nine kilometers altitude. And then we'll get an idea of what it would have looked like if Mount Everest were right there. And that's what it would look like. That is actually the height of Mount Everest. And that really gives you an idea of the sheer massive scale of this lake and the incredible just amazing thing is that it really took just a few weeks to fill this whole thing if that in fact let's work out exactly how long it took to fill this incredible mass of water so i think water entered from the warburton around the end of April. Let's say the 29th of April, which is what we're looking at here, you can see the water shoot in from the north and we're into the 3rd of May, 4th of May, and as we go through into late May, we've got the lake mostly full by the end of the period. So I mean, I think it's probably, you could probably round it off at a month to fill the whole thing um, in this case. But there were certain days when the expansion was extremely rapid, particularly in the middle of May, when it went from this kind of linear move down from the two Warburton entries. So <clears throat> that's the other thing I haven't really mentioned is that if you look up at the top, you see two, two entrances, but they both come from the Warburton River. There's actually a branch branching feature up here where it splits and then comes down two different channels probably best clear on that one so it actually comes down through here and down from here better to look at the high res I'll just show that on the high res okay so to see it in the high resolution I'm switching to false color as this reveals the water a bit more clearly and this is the split here the Warburton coming down here it actually has another split further up so easy to get distracted by this imagery but um so the Warburton coming down here, you can see it's overtopped its banks and then it's splitting here down these two channels which form the two entries into Lake Eyre. You can see a delta-like feature on the eastern entry. And then some really interesting uh, patterns are being picked out in this false color imagery and the sharp edge of the water encroaching on the northern edge of the lake. As we look up further upstream, you'll see a second split much further up in the Warburton from these huge floods and it splits down these two channels and I don't know the name of the northern river I presume it has a different name and then that comes down like that so really really some really remarkable imagery and more to come as it, the filling completes its process so I wanted to quickly talk about this shift in the water that occurred on the what day was it between there and there is it? Yeah. So that is the 18th of May to the 19th of May. Now I've looked at this and I think I think I know what caused this. So I want to show you. On the 18th of May, this was the distribution. I'm going to draw an outline of where the muddiest water appears to be on both of the different sections. And then if we go to the 18th of May, you can see the shift and change the color. And now the muddy waters are have shifted over towards the west, or at least some, some degree of the boundary, it looks like. And in addition, the edge on the western side has shifted as well. So something happened here. And I think what happened was a surge of wind around a high pressure system. This is on the 18th, uh, the 17th of May, so before the 18th, the 18th was the start of the change. A high pressure is over here in the bite. You can see the surge of southerlies coming up. Lake Eyre is somewhere in here. And if we go forward to the 18th, that high pressure builds in, becomes higher pressure and moves down quite far to the south, bringing a surge in southerly wind. As we go into the 19th, then it's still there, but now the high is actually reached overland. And so we've got this southerly wind to southeasterly wind. I think that probably pushed the water and caused the change that we saw. Another thing I wanted to highlight 
and also mentioned this in the previous video, but now we get a kind of more full view all the way to Lake Eyre of the process. The distances, let's get an idea of the scale. So I'm just going to put on a line here. That's about, that's 400 kilometers. So we're talking a really large area that we're looking at right now. Let me just clear this off. I can just clear it off. How do you clear it off? X. So now up here, let's look at the dates when the particular areas of the river reached their magnitude because this, their highest levels, because this was really a wave of water, almost like nothing I've, I've seen before in the satellite imagery. And I know that this floods periodically, but this was I've seen previous lake air fills, and this one was really, really, really the most dramatic of any of them. I'm going to focus on the Warburton, which is down this route. And so in this upper basin, we're back on April 4th. I'll just put a four there as being roughly the time when that appears to be at its maybe maximum level. It kind of already starts drying out after that. so. I think that's reasonable anyway it's around that time and then as the water surges down we see this area filling up to what looks like a maximum flood around i would say a little bit before that so right at the beginning of may i'll put the first of may <laughs> that's an m april and then as we okay i mean that's probably a bit after that but so, and then as we go forward, then the surge of water comes down and you see this upper area, it's already drying out, greening with lush vegetation, maybe some cane toads coming down from Queensland, which some people were commenting about in the previous video, which uh, seems uh, unfortunate. And then finally, as we come in to May, mid-May, then we've got kind of lake air filling up. So that just shows that surge of water coming down. And you can obviously look at Cooper Creek and other rivers going down into New South Wales. And in that upper basin, if we zoom in and look at Sentinel-3, you can see the surge of water it filling up, reaching its maximum, and then the drying out and the greening of the area. So the final thing I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this surge of flood was actually changing the weather in Central Australia. So I kind of want to show you that and be interested to hear in the comments whether any of you believe this or not. But I mean, certainly it's I think it's pretty clear anyway. Uh, so this is actually before April 3rd. So before the flood had entered this area, you see a bank of cumulus clouds. The area of flood is actually clear of clouds and I would say that's probably due to the, the cooler water. And so it's time to talk about the sea breeze, lake, lake breeze type effects. These, this is the aquamodus, which passes over in the afternoon. That's when the land has heated up. So you get the cumulus clouds forming over the warmer land. But if you have large bodies of water or the ocean, that will tend to be a bit, a bit clearer if the conditions are relatively calm and you just get this kind of general cumulus like you see in the symmetry. So as we go forward, the water surges down the Warburton. I think there are some nice examples of it being cloud free, but with clouds forming around the sides, even in the center where there's a bit of an island, some clouds forming there. And then some nice examples here. You see clouds on the southern, what has become a shoreline essentially, the southern shoreline convection there. And that's that land breeze, uh, sea breeze rather effect lake breeze, whatever you want to call it. And I think that it actually contributed to the development of thunderstorms as well. And this is probably the nicest example. It clearly shows the distinction between the flooded areas being cloud free and then all of the cumulus over the dry areas. It's basically because the land has a lower heat capacity than water, which stays cooler. So the land heats up and then convects it up. You can see some nice patterns also over on the Cooper Creek complicated lake system. This is a, a total transformation of the weather here due to the lakes. So if the lakes weren't there, those, that, those clouds would be spread all over the whole area. But now they're only in certain areas. Really amazing. So there you have it, folks. What an amazing event as we watch Lake Air filling up with water. This Sentinel false color view. What are we going to see next? Well, 
the thing to look out for is if I zoom over here and have a look at the progression of the Cooper Creek water, which is slower, slower than the Warburton, it is edging its way down through its complicated lake and channel system towards Lake Eyre. And it does look like there is a channel there. I'm sure the locals will be able to tell me in the comments if they're watching. And yep, so this is going to very much more slowly edge its way towards Lake Eyre, providing additional water. On the other hand, we saw with that surge that things are drying up further up the basin. So this is the water that will make it into Lake Eyre. There isn't more, or not much more unless there's more rain in the forecast. So, exciting stuff. Hey, if you like this video, why not click that like button and subscribe? Ever heard that before? <laughs>